we have them in the audience. Uh, let me see who we got tonight. We have got um, two stars, Catalina Sandino Morello. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! It's really exciting to uh, be here. And, uh, uh, first of all, I'd, I'd like to thank uh, the production company, Thunder Row, and Cash Film, and Brian Gage, uh, keeping me, giving us some free support. And then, of course, uh, my my idols here, yeah. but you are the Well, the challenge was how uh, 
uh, how to uh, using uh, some kind of a technique or you know uh, anything uh, or visual or sound to make the audience understand uh, to accept uh, the, the, the story and also move by the story and by the characters. So that's a very uh, challenging because you had, uh, you know, uh, sometimes you, uh, you have, uh, when you when you got no dialogue, you have to you can understand and uh, also make the audience uh, after uh, watching the whole movie, they didn't feel missing anything. And by the meantime, the, the challenge is uh, a lot of what kind of actor you're working with, you know, and because. We, we need a brilliant actor, you know, like uh, Joe and Catalina, yes, uh, and, uh, to deliver a great performance. Uh, and so I think they, the good actor made a great, better, you know, greater contribution. What does it feel like to be called a great actor by John? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, it's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> but, but for both of you, I mean, this is, this is challenging for both of you in very different ways. Catalina, I, I think you're very much the kind of like the emotional, the emotional heart and the center of the film. And then Joel, from the moment we see you, you're wearing a reindeer sweatshirt, or and and then and then you you shift you shift from being like this this wholesome family dad into this ultimate killing machine. <laughs> So as you worked your way through the script, how did you process, how did you channel, what were the challenges that you had as you were working through this film without any dialogue? Because it's all here, right? Yeah, well, we, we didn't have to learn any lines, so uh, <laughs> we some time there so we could, we could focus on, on the other parts of the journey. But it, it, I think both me and Catalina like, realized that it was, you know, some of these really emotional scenes, usually you have the text, and, and actually the text helps you get into the emotion. It can be a trigger and, and, and sort of a catalyst into those emotions. But here, it was like you really just had to like get in to the, I mean, we did some screaming, so that, you know, that got cut out of the movie, but, but it helped us. But it was, um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was difficult, but, but you know, in these kind of the, the the emotional scenes that we were that we were you know going for, it, it's so important that you have someone with you that like that gets to those frequencies. Um, and so I, I was so grateful when uh, when we had those scenes that, that I had Catalina there, and, and you know when we we sort of helped trigger each other to. To get to those places, but um, yeah, it was it was a uh, yeah, it was an interesting journey to have to like really try to you know. I mean, th there's there's always moments, of periods of films where you you're telling a story, you know, with your inner dialogue, but to have the whole film just be portrayed in that, it, I mean, it was, it was it was challenging, but it was you know, it also. You know, there are challenges, but then there's also, like, opportunities. Like, like the, the way that John shot the film, it, it, it kind of made me understand, you know, how to approach it in other ways as well. So, you know, in a normal film, you when you have the, the, you know, the dialogue back and forth, you have to shoot coverage, and, you know, that takes a lot of time. But here, we didn't have any coverage. We didn't, we didn't need any. So, so for every scene, John would just design one beautiful shot that like told the whole story of the scene and uh, you know that those were the kind of things that I mean of course that was part of his original vision but it was a it was a learning process and and, and a discovery process of like how do you how do you tell a story with no dialogue Catalina was your experience the same um yeah sort of I feel that you know in those emotional scenes and I feel that in this movie I just Cry. <laughs> well, you're so good at it. Yeah. Um, you have to have an inner dialogue. And even though there, there's no words written on the page, if you turn off your dialogue, the motion's gone. You have to be always on. You know, it's not like in some sort of movies that you are 
with someone and you just see the camera where the camera's going. Like in this kind of movie, you have to be always on the Yeah, it was more than that. It, it, it was, really was. It was huh? crazy. And you and people are like, oh, well, you didn't have to learn any lines, so easy. That's the, that's the contrary. I think it's, it's more challenging for an actor to, especially challenging emotions, you know, not just sadness, but you know, anger and, you know, emotion, emotional stuff, I think it's more difficult than just words. So I think, you know, I agree with what Joel um, said about, you can challenge those emotions with someone there. Even though we didn't talk, I know that there was someone receiving and giving me the same kind of energy that I was giving. So it was very balanced in that way. So you feel safe giving that sort of emotion. Yeah, you have to trigger each other. Uh, it was great. And, and did you understand the characters implicitly from the script? Was it something that came when you were both cast and you were working together in the pre-production? Was it something that John brought to the table as you started to work your way through um, before you actually shot the film? I mean, it, it, it's kind of the thing where you know, that often happens on movies, you, you, you say hi, you know, then like, okay, now we're going to play that we've been married and the love of our lives for 10 years, you know, and then you, and you, you hang out with these kids that you get to borrow for a few weeks and, uh, <laughs> and then, you, you know, you, you throw them around a little bit and try to get them comfortable. Actually, actually, that's a very cute story. The kid that played our, kid, our son, um, he was, how old was he, like seven or eight? Yes. Sweet, sweet. I mean, there were so many of them, I can't <laughs> And this kid is in the floor. We're like, shh, you're gonna get killed. So just, just fall asleep and be like, okay. And then they took so long, I don't know why the explosions or the whatever was happening, and the kid actually fell asleep. <laughs> so when he woke up, he was filled this with blood. Story. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, oh, was everywhere. And John was like, okay, we're ready. And the kid is like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> so, and Plus, you are crying. Oh, my kids! I am like, no! I'm coming in! And I'm like, shut up, I'm trying to act. <laughs> that was, that was, uh, that was an yeah. interesting moment. Where the poor kid, I mean, like, he, he didn't understand. The mother didn't tell him that as soon as you open your eyes, you're going to be bloody up. You need to stay there. He was freaking out. He was like, what is going on? What is going on? He wanted to... And also the kid did not speak any English, you know, so my Spanish is so, so, so. I was there, I was there to sing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and John, for you, this is, um, last time you were here, you told us um, how you shot the killer and it had, it had no script going into it. This film, it's different, obviously there's a script, but there's no dialogue. When you read the script and you received the script, did you instantly paint the film in your head? Did you understand how everything was gonna work? Because this feels like rich territory for you and a, and a playground that you've played in before. Well, I, uh, when I read the script, I, I already got a picture in my mind, but I, uh, uh, I just feel, uh, it's just like uh, other movies, like other uh, script to me, you know, and uh, just with another article. So I just uh, sort of feel normally. But one thing I uh, realized, I just, I, uh, <coughs> I need to change uh, the style a little bit. So you, uh, uh, so that's why you, uh, you don't even see any pictures in my film. <laughs> <laughs> well, I because I, I want that everything is uh, uh, look more realistic and, uh, and turn down the violin a little bit. Like Barlow, but his character is a. Uh, uh, he's an ordinary man, he's not a superhero, he, he's not a, a super fighter, you know. 
Uh, he's a real man. So uh, it's a man with a response. John, John, the movie's pretty violent. Yeah. <laughs> and then love, love of his, his son and his family. So, so uh, that's why I, uh, I, I had the picture. I said, uh, uh, that's why to make it different from what I, what I have done before. You know, my movie used to be uh, 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 a little bit over the top, you know. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> But any time you just see, uh, since I think I have a, a note art, you know, and I figure out the music. Mm -hmm. And I think the music is a bad, a better language uh, in the film. I, I, I must say I need to uh, thank uh, my uh, composer, uh, Marco, you know, he really did a great job, you know. Music that I think I started at night, it was played by his son. His son played a guitar. You didn't you know, cover him in blood and shoot him, did you? <laughs> you? You didn't cover him in blood and shoot the son, did you? <laughs> oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, everybody's so, uh, so involved, you know. So I think that the music uh, there should take uh, credit. And I know it's a song. The song is, uh, I think, uh, the movie is a silent song, yeah? So I think that uh, it's not official. The song is very important. You know, when is it? You know, the, 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 the bigger song, the lower song, you know, the, the, you know, the, the eight makes a lot of difference. So it's, it, it's, it's almost another character, the sound, the sound design and the construct there and also the music as well. And, and you're talking about the music. Um, some of the music earlier on, when the film is set up, it almost feels kind of Lalo Schifrin-esque, like Dirty Harry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So was that one of the inspirations? Uh, yeah, yes, I think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the reason why I bring that up is because thinking back to... So, so Dirty Harry was obviously a reference and an inspiration on your earlier work, and, and in particular Hard Boiled. And Joel's character... Um, feels very much like tequila from Hard Boiled. Yeah, so as you were constructing this film, were those references that you were pulling on, were you thinking back to Dirty Harry, were you thinking back to, is Joel, are you the new tequila? Is that, is that what we're doing with that? Um, that sounds good, I'll take it. <laughs> so talk about the inspirations. Your inspirations within this, both from a music standpoint and from a character standpoint. Oh, uh, no, I didn't. I didn't have any inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> And, and so this, this performance from Joel, um, Joel, you, so we've seen you, you've been physical in your movies for a lot of years, going all the way back to, to Snap a Cash, to Robocop, um, Rick Flag, we were able to scream, uh, Suicide Squad here. This one though, I think above any of the others, you got your ass handed to you and you probably kicked more ass than you've ever seen before. Can you talk about the, the physical demands of this? Because it, it looks really burly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, <clears throat> yeah, it, I mean, it's sort of been an accumulation of uh, working with the same stunt guys. Uh, I, I've, I've been training a lot with uh, this, uh, like 8711, the Chad Stahelski and John Wick uh, yeah. guys. And um, and on this one, because it was a, a character that shouldn't really have any skills. So we, what we were working on was me more being able to, you know, do more of some of the uglier stunt stuff, like the like falling in stairs and just, you know, just taking the beatings. <laughs> and um, 
to just sort of get that gritty feel. And also because John really wanted to have long takes without, um, you know, so we didn't want to cut up the, the action scenes. So then we sort of designed the action after that, the, the, that sort of requirement, so, so, so it doesn't have to cut. And, but that also means that you can't, you know, cut to the stunt guy doing it. So, so we, we sort of designed the action around the things that I could do. Um, but yeah, that was, was a lot of work. But I, I mean, I, re I really enjoyed the, that part of storytelling. You know, it's a, uh, um, if anyone has, you know, been in a, in a car crash or in a fight, um, you, you know that, that the, the perception of time just really warps and, and like a couple of seconds can feel like a lifetime. There's so many things that goes on. And, and, and if you've been in a fight, then you know that, that you can have that interaction with another person. And it, 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 you, you both can feel like it's going through an eternity, but it's actually maybe 10 seconds in, in real life. So, so it's, it, it, I find that part of, of action and, and storytelling in action interesting and, and trying to make it realistic just trying to get get some of it like a sense of, of what it could feel like and so so john for you as you're designing all this action and constructing this you said um you said before that your the films that you made better tomorrow the show and fat movies hardboard the killer you made those films with a sense of anger um, because it was, uh, crime was out of control and you were making these films in response, these were your statements against, uh, against the crime and the gangsters. So some of those themes we see here, is it fair to say that the anger that you had that fueled you back then, are you feeling that anger again today in, in, in making this film? Yeah, yeah, I have, you know, uh, yeah, there's a... Uh some kind of anger, you know, you know, when I should be made over and action. You know, I, uh, of course, I have a, I'm a, I have three kids and myself, you know, so when I, you know, when I feel, you know, the, uh, when the, uh, when the movie about the legal child that they're being murdered, you know, or you know, so I feel anger as well. And was, uh, so I, uh, I ask them to, uh, uh, I asked my son team to design some more, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, why, you know, it is an uh, action. And realistic, rather. And the you know, one, one thing I want to explain you know, why I like to take, uh, you know, the, the wrong take I did in the fight. Uh, most of the fight scene, I really took the wrong take. And they uh, decide to be a sort of time. So they actually we don't get much time. And the other thing, I'm gonna try to make the, all the action look more of a powerful and, uh, and realistic. So it uh, actually, yeah, yeah, they were a real fight. Uh, you know, you know, really hitting the face, you know, punching the, you know, the, the gas, you know, and you know, and then, uh, you, you know, you know, you know, the sound effect, you know, on set, you know, pam pam pam, you know, it, uh, it sounds, you know, very, uh, very, very angry, you know, you know, and um, so. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Just well, when we hit each other for real, that was a, by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to clarify that. It was yeah, did you, with, 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 I mean, it happened, but it's all been by mistake. Yeah. And when you say, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, really sorry. Yeah. How, how, how long was the shoot? What? How long, how long was the shoot? Was, was it 10 weeks? How many, how many weeks was it? Oh, the whole movie? It yeah. felt like three months, but I think it was two and a half. Oh, oh it, was, it was about 38 to 40 days. Oh, it was. And, and, and how much of that was... <laughs> how, how much of that was spent in the action sequences and choreographing all of that? Is it two months? Yeah, yeah something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. I think I came down three weeks before we started shooting. Did it feel good getting back into the action? Because this, this is a very intimate film. The, the last sort of 15 years or so, the films you've been making, the, the Crossing, those two films, Red Cliff, those two films, those are big, sweeping, sprawling epics. This feels far more contained and far more intimate. Was that a decision that you wanted to make? You wanted to make something more contained? Well, uh, I, I must say that I only get fed up with the, uh, all the big budget movies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, uh, there was a reason why, why I uh, left uh, for a while, and, you know, they uh, uh, went to China to make this, uh, some film. Uh, because uh, once I established as an uh, A-list director or big budget uh, movie director, so uh, the only uh, the only thing needed script is you know, all the action. You know, it's, it's, a, you know, it's an action movie, you know. and uh, those uh, you know and, uh, 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 much a smaller budget than but a good script, you know, you know, uh, they have never seen it. You know, that's I. First, I, I, I love drama, actually, I love drama, I love human drama, you know, and, and I can make a pretty good comedy as well. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody believe in me. <laughs> oh, John Wu is a good director, okay. You know, I always try to, uh, uh, let me try something smaller, but my agent is uh, my partner, and uh, he said, oh, uh, 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 you make a big movie. <laughs> That's a good agent. But so, <laughs> uh, uh, in the meantime, uh, since I'm, you know, I'm Asian, you know, and I'm Chinese, you know, so there's some, some, uh, some other uh, topic like uh, the uh, something about history, uh, the American history, or the uh, uh, the racial problem, you know, uh, uh, there's something about you know. The, the lower class of you know, society, you know, those, those, are, those are kind of, you know, uh, script you have know, never said to me. But I thought those are script, they, they also say, oh, he, he, he's, he's Chinese, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, uh, since uh, uh, I, I, I've got so much fun you know, by uh, shooting uh, uh, Silent Night, uh, I knew it was my first independent film. You know, uh, like the producer said, you know, and, uh, uh, I, I got a lot more freedom. So, uh, actually, it was uh, right, you know, and then the way, uh, I, I didn't get much of an interfere from, from anyone. And then uh, the, uh, the producer, you know, I never uh, came into the set, you know. But, so uh, I, I, uh, on my own, you know, I can, uh, and I walk with my actor so well, you know, and especially uh, with uh, Joe and Catalina. They, they, sometimes they uh, come with some very good idea, and then, okay, let's change it, let's change it. And then, uh, uh, forget about the script, you know, for the moment. And then we change whatever we want. You know, like the scene there, they are uh, thinking about the sun, you know, and they, uh, uh, all of a sudden Joe came to me, John, I want to do a, uh, a, a, a moment uh, like a, a, a sleeping my son, but, he, uh, uh, but, he, uh, but, he, but he's, he's not there. You know? Okay, okay, I, I came with the ideas. Uh, originally, the scene should, uh, should have a lot of a flashback, a lot of flashback, uh, uh, the father and son, you know, they bring the toys together, and then we change the change the idea right away. And uh, no, nobody else asked why. And we just did it. <laughs> uh, okay, I come with the idea, and uh, let's do it only one shot. Okay, you were lying in the bed, and then uh, uh, when the camera pushed you into your tight, and then we put a kid, you know, uh, beside you, and then you uh, uh, the camera pulled back again. And then you touch a little boy, and then, and then uh, when the camera uh, pushing in again, 
I think that, that was one of my favorite moments of my career. It was. But did, and, what John was describing. Did you feel yeah, that yes, freedom? I was, yes, and, 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 uh, so I feel so much, uh, uh, you know, creative freedom by God. We were really doing that. And I, uh, even though there was, there was a lot of money and a lot of time, you know, but still we got a fun. And, and Catalina and Joel, did you feel that freedom on set as well? Was that liberating? The ability to kind of go off off script and to create on set? Yeah, I mean, we, we, I think I think because there's also no dialogue, um, so we, there's always like, what, what what's the story that we're telling in this scene? And uh, and I think it would it was easier for ideas to come up of how do we tell the story. But but the the, the scene that, that John was describing, I don't know if you remember from the movie when uh, when I walk in to the uh, to, to the kids' room and, and I sit on on the bed, and uh, I mean I, I couldn't believe that like that was like ma film master you know in, in action where I was like maybe it should be like a flashback or something with the kid you know in the bed like. And then, and then John just designed on the spot, just designed the whole shot of how we're gonna do a flashback, but in one shot. And then we had to, you call it like Hollywood in when you're like faking something into the shot. So we had to Hollywood in the kid. <laughs> and, uh, and, and while we're like trying to get the kid in, the, the, the camera moves in like close on my eye, so we can't see that there's team members trying to like <laughs> Hollywood in the kid. And, and the kid is always like squirming too. You know? That's, that's uh, it's, and I was trying to cry. You know, so that's I was squirming and, and, and acting. You know? and, but then finally he stopped squirming, so that was great. <laughs> Similarly for you, because I mean, you know, your, your work is less physical than Joel's, but but still equally demanding because you're such an emotional core to this film. Did you enjoy that freedom, or were you locked in? Uh, no, 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 not at all. I think John would, um, you know, he would tell us what was happening, and um, if you had an idea, you can throw your idea, uh, which we did a few times, and. He was, as, as he said, he was very open to our ideas. And as he said, he did, because nobody said no. <laughs> and sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't work. But uh, it was actually very cool to have the freedom to explore. It was really good. <coughs> yeah, sometimes we, uh, uh, we play music on the set. We do a shot like that. There. There's a scene as she coming home and and then they're looking for the hospital, mm -hmm. you know, going door by door, opening door by door, they didn't see anything. But we're shooting, we're we, 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 we playing uh, uh, the music so she can follow the rhythm. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, it, it somehow, but somehow... Oh, it worked, worked a lot. It worked a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. That was super memorable. <laughs> stupid answer. So, John, um, I, I'm not sure when we'll have you back again. Obviously, we would love to have you at any time. Is there anything that you want to leave us with uh, as we close out this night from Silent Night or anything from uh, from your career that you want to share with the audience tonight? Well, I uh, I have a big pressure working on the film and I... Uh, I think uh, the other actors should uh, take a credit, and even my my uh, little daughter over there. She, <laughs> she played uh, the, the <laughs> she played the uh, the dad uh, of the film. Uh, 
Israel and all the actors, and this, uh, even the STEM team, uh, the, the cameraman, uh, everyone was, uh, you know, they, uh, uh, they feel it's a really a challenge with the project. And, uh, it, and it, it's, uh, uh, it was a very tough movie, it was a tough movie to shoot, uh, but I'm so, everybody's so glad, you know, the, the, uh, the result turned uh, look pretty good. You know, so. <laughs> and I uh, hope the audience uh, will, uh, uh, will like it. And also, you know, the, the, uh, the movie is sometimes not about, you know, how, how much money you shoot it. It's, uh, you know, how much the wisdom you use for the film. Issuing a film is not about money. You know, some, some, uh, some, uh, sometimes some people they are spending a uh, billion dollars, uh, you know, to, to make a film. But, uh, I think uh, you know, uh, all, uh, all kind of movies, uh, you know, they all is worth to do it and worth uh, to watch it, as long as it is uh, the story about you and mine. Yeah. You know, so uh, like Silent Night is all about uh, you, you know, everyone, you know, you know, everyone and the kind of same kind of love, the love of uh, the family. Yeah, so that's the, that's the main theme for our, our movies. Thank you.